Alola, everyone! Well, welcome back to Alola. Yeah. Wait, no, this is a retelling. This isn't a return trip. This is completely new. You're coming here for oh. the first time. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the previous game never happened. Ooh. Multiverse theory. Uh, and I think that's what this game stems off. It's Pokemon Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. Yep. Also and... known as... <laughs> We're trying to do the old third generation in game again, and well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Um, what should we start first? I mean, I want to like address something first. When we initially picked up the game, I only got Ultra Moon because I only got the first game, and you got both games. But you started with Moon for your adventure. Yep, because I needed the oh, the Moon exclusives. And then I found out the totems were the, the thing, and also Pennywise, so... Yeah, I'm currently going through Ultra Sun now, too! Yeah, so... And while I was going through Ultra Moon, I was, like, playing with someone I know who also had Ultra Sun, so I know the difference... Like, I was kind of playing with him side by side, so I basically know all the differences between the two games already. Yeah, I've been noticing the differences as well. Not too many noticeable ones, like... The major ones have already been spoiled, so yeah, it's basically just wanna... new Pokemon. Sick. Yeah, just diff I mean by quote unquote new Pokemon for the majority, it's just like returning mons just to have deck fillers, just to make just to make getting the shiny charm just more of a living hell. Oh yeah, unless you're like me and still have the Pokemon Bank active, in which case. Woo <laughs> Yeah, but I have to get the shiny charm because I'm currently trying to find all those shiny ultra beasts that aren't shiny, that are shiny, like aren't shiny last. <laughs> yeah, um, you're lucky that you managed to get Jenga. I wish I'd remember to get the shiny charm before I went for my two stack attack 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 attackers. Stack attack. Oh yeah, just by the way, this is gonna be heavy spoilers. Heavy, heavy spoilers, but heavily. To get the m biggest spoiler out of the way, if you've played Sun and Moon, you've played Ultra Sun and Moon for the most part. There's not too much of a difference. Well, the differences I do want to like talk about because I do have a bone to pick with the with Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, whatever. I I'm just gonna call the new games Ultra. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. And yeah, like I said, they're like. So overall, they're pretty much the same game. There are several changes to them, but there's nothing major like, Look! Battle Frontier! Look! Distortion World! Look! A sequel to the games! Well, if you count the Ultra Space as a Distortion World, then, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that's mostly a minigame. Although you oh, get, really, you get really some... really annoying minigame, but... You get some pretty good Pokémon from it. Yeah, you do. But first of all, let's handle the nitpick that both that both of us have. Which nitpick Looks is down that? the touch screen. Shut up, Rotom! Oh my god. I mean, when original Sun and Moon came out, when they said there's a Rotom in your Pokedex, I thought, that's cute. I like that. I really do. I would not mind a talking Rotom. The anime came out and addressed Ro Rotom Dex's um, character. I'm like, that's cute. I like Rotom Dex. This game comes out. Can you please shut up before I punch you into the ocean? I will drown you, you stupid thing. I will short circuit your entire systems. Shut up. Stop telling me information that I didn't ask for. Because if I didn't ask you, it's because I already knew the information. Rotom, can you please shut up? Can you please shut up so I can use your Roto Lotto? Please? Here, let me give you advice you didn't ask for. Did you know you could go to the Pokemon Center to heal your Pokemon? Uh, I mean, some of his advice is kind of helpful in newcomers. Like, you know, burning a Pokemon isn't obvious that, that it will have an attack, sure, but I didn't ask you. <laughs> I didn't ask you that. And can you please stop dabbing at me? Uh, and, just, and also the weird kissy face thing it keeps doing for me in the sun. It's like, stop doing that! That's weird! 
Yeah, it's like... I mean, when I first got it, when I first got Rotom Deck, it's just... I mean, I thought the new stuff was kind of cute because when it, in the first game, I, when I was shiny hunting, I got kind of got bored just seeing the same emotes from him. But then it just went down a slippery slope into a very annoying Rotom. Yeah. Like, at the very least, if there was a way for you to turn off his ability to talk, I'd be fine with that. But along the fact that he never shuts up, he gets bored so easily. Yeah, but when he gets bored and all you have to do is touch him, he either, he either asks you a question, which is entertaining, or he actually activates Roto Lotto. Yeah, and some of the ones I've actually intentionally not answered, like, Hi, do you think I'm helpful? <laughs> Where's the no option? Yeah, where is it? I saw this funny comic where it says, like, you know, they claim that Rotom will um, learn how to talk like you, but he really doesn't. He just ends up asking the same questions. But the comic says, um, Rotom will learn to talk to you, talk to you. and Rotom, Rotom Dexter says, I just learned how to speak entirely in memes. <laughs> oh, not even that. If it learns to speak like you, that doesn't. Well, doesn't that mean it just stands out with that stupid smile? <laughs> oh, that's so true. Because it's learning to talk from the player. The player is a silent protagonist. He's like. He's like. I know how to talk like you. Fight, bag, run, roto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Every time I imagine Rotodex speaking, because I was watching an excessive amount of the anime in subtitles, all I all I know is that Rotom Dex I don't I don't think he speaks in English, but I just imagine him speaking in English. Well, if it helps the Japanese dub for his voice is probably a lot better than his English dub one, which His Japanese dub uh, is not His English voice one isn't Bad? I've heard worse voices, but. Yeah. Uh... I mean, at least he's not Japanese Faba. Oh no, wait, no. No, no, not Faba, I'm sorry. I was thinking of his hi as Hypno. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. Close enough. You know, for a, for a moment I forgot Faba's name while I was watching the anime. I'm like, what was his name again? I can't remember. So I'm just gonna call him Mr. Vibrava. Not even that, I just look at him and go, Hi, pointless NPC. Because that's what he was in Sun. He did nothing in Sun. He was there to just be a jerk to you in the sec in the return trip to the Aether Paradise. Yeah, I just I just like him so much more in the anime. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> and he's really he's gotten better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But yeah. there while there's been several good characters have gone major buffs to them. Others have taken drastic, drastic, drastic hits. Yeah, I mean, who are you referring to? Because I'm going to lead to my biggest point about this game. Lusamine, Gladion, and unfortunately Lily, they took the biggest hits. Yeah. What I, th what I kept saying, like after I played Ultra Moon and was digesting the story, what I kept saying throughout the week, that Moon has a better story, but Ultra Moon has better gameplay. Yeah, and that's true. Yeah. I mean, with the story in the original Sun and Moon, you get so much, like these, I love Sun and Moon's cutscenes. The cutscene at Executor Island, the cutscene when you defeat Lusamine, and other cutscenes like that aren't really there. They're just kind of scrapped for... Um, Necrozma. Yeah, and there are so many moments that you think they're gonna build on to her later on, but because of Necrozma, they just take it away. There's no reason for Niliego to appear in the Aether Foundation because Niliego is no is a non thing in the story. Yeah, it feels like it feels like they just kind of took the ending, erased it, and just wrote a new one without any without a lot of changes to the original story. Yeah, and because of that, it actually makes the characters worse off. Like, Lusamine, you... The battle with Lusamine in Niliego's space, 
that was the conclusion of her character. She was still a villain, but at least being pushed to those limits and seeing what her actions can do, you could tell would be a motivator for her to change later on, and if she was brought back at the end of Sun and Moon, after the poison had been taken out of her, then that would have been a better conclusion to her story. Lily, because she didn't... because Lusamine wasn't driven insane because of Niliego, she didn't have any reason to go off to Kanto to become a trainer to become stronger. Now while you do fight Lily, or fight with Lily in the story, hey, she's... her getting the Clefairy Man? There's no real reason for her to do that, other than personal morals, but there's no big push to get her going. Yeah. And with, uh, I mean, instead of Lily going off to Kento and train, it's Gladian that goes off to Kento and train. And I never understood the reason why he started to do that. Yeah, especially because there was no reason for him to do that. And also with the changes that they made to incorporate Necrozma, Gladion and Lily go from these children who have had an abusive parent to kind of spoiled brats. Because... I could, I could see that. Yeah, like, the reason why Gladion took Type Null in Sun and Moon is because they were t raising Type Null to be an Ultra Beast killer to have their own personal gains. They were abusing Type Null, so Gladion took it away. Same as Lily with Cosmog, with Nebi. She took Nebi away from that space because they were abusing Nebi. Here, they're raising Type Null to be a counter to Necrozma, which is going to destroy the world. So that automatically makes Gladion's removal of him sound more s selfish. Especially because he tries to make the sacrifice of, No, wait, let me do it. And Lily, they're, tr they're using Nebi to try and get into Ultra Space to ha deal with Necrozma. And Lily taking that away from them, that means that you're putting all of Alola in risk because of Nebi. And unfortunately, neither the many outweigh the needs of the few. Yeah. Although the only good cutscene to come out of Ultra, and it would have been so much better if it was in the original Sun and Moon, when you defeat Gladian as a title challenge, you can return back to the Aether Foundation and you are treated to a cutscene with Lucinine uh, meeting her, I'm not sure if it's her ex-husband, but basically her husband again. Yeah. And again, like, that would work so much better in Sun and Moon because that adds more to their original characters. Yeah. And oh yeah, and the and uh, the person I was playing with, well, basically my boyfriend. I was playing <laughs> like I, I had Moon, he had Sun. Um, he made a good point. He said that Moon, in a way, is a. I'm not. Which one is it? It's either the original Sun and Moon was a bad ending and Ultra Moon was a good ending. Not saying that Ultra Moon had a better story, but it had a better outcome overall for everyone. And that's true, and the outcome in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is better, but it does take away from those big character moments. So yeah, the ending is better for everyone overall. A lot of the motivations, a lot of the drives, a lot of those needed conclusions to those characters just weren't there. Yeah. Even though Pokemon Sun and Moon might have been a bad ending per se, it, I'd say it would probably be the true ending. It's a more fulfilling ending. Yeah. But there's one thing that Ultra does that I uh, like that uh, Sun and Moon didn't have is basically the gameplay was a lot more challenging and I like that. There's a lot more teeth on this play. There have been several times where I've been either completely KO'd or almost KO'd. I even told you earlier how I managed to defeat Guzma's attacks in Po Town twice was basically the what I call the capitalism trick of just spamming revives and potions and just waiting for an opening. Yeah. It's also how I beat a Giovanni, which spoilers, we're gonna get to that later. I didn't do Rainbow Rocket because I was too busy um software setting for shinies. <laughs> Let's just say that Rainbow Rocket will... Well, most of them aren't too much of a challenge. When you get to the last two, they are going to destroy you. 
I mean, since we're doing spoilers anyway, who are the last two? The way I did it was I went from right, left, left, right, center. And that would be better explained in the dungeon itself. So my order was Maxi, Archie, Cyrus, Lysander, Getsis, and then Giovanni. Mm. I mean, I could see that, but I'm like, why wouldn't you do it, like, generation? Because oh. you don't know, actually. Okay. Giovanni, well, Getsis and Giovanni are always going to be the last two. Oh, and okay. While you get hints as to what the order is going to be, when you first split up, when it's a you've got the choice of your own trips. Basically, you have these two paths on the left and right first, which will take you to Maxi and Archie. Then you've got these, you know, the upstairs paths that look like they're just scenery in the Aether Foundation Mansion. Yeah. Those will take you to Cyrus and Lysander. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I was I was kind of surprised when they um, announced Rainbow Rocket and I saw Cyrus and I'm like, wait, I thought you died. I thought the same thing with Lysander. <laughs> oh yeah, Lysander. The thing with the Rainbow Rocket story is that all of them come from universes where they won. Maxi and Archie come from individual universes where they won. Cyrus is believed to have come from the Platinum Universe, where instead of being trapped in the Torn World, he gets sent here. But at that point, Dawn or Lucas weren't able to stop him anyway, so he theoretically made his perfect world. And Are Lysander you... came from a world where he managed to use the ultimate weapon. Wait, how did they gather everyone like that? Because Giovanni somehow now has the ability to warp time and space to his will. Oh, thanks, Diog and Palkia. You sure are reliable. Well, not even that. Like, all he has is his Mewtwo. What did you have to do with that? I don't know. Like, somehow he's developed the ability to walk time and space to his will. And he summons all the villains. Fr Just the heads of the villains, not their teams. From their good endings? Yeah. How does Archie even have a good ending? When he's like Archie and Maxine, when they saw the destruction of what either Kyogre and Groudon did, they were like, oh no, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah, no. That's just confusing. Then, yeah. did Ar then I mean, in that universe, Ar Archie and Maxine may have succeeded, but. but oh well, those God. two are two different universes. So Maxi came from one universe, Archie came from the other one. And what's funny is that after you beat both of them, they come out into the foyer, they see each other and go, Wait, how are you here? I beat you. No, I beat you. But I beat you. No, I beat you. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm just saying for their respective universes. Because I remember what how Archie, like... I'm just gonna say Archie, because if I just said Archie and Maxi, I'd be confusing. I remember how Archie was in Sapphire. He stepped out and said, oh no. What have I done? And if it weren't up for the, if the trainer wasn't there, he would have been probably depressed in his little sea of hat, like his little, you know, sea. Well, Archie is actually one of the better ones for it. He's got a more subdued character arc to him. He's still going to, if he somehow manages to beat all the other leaders, take his flood Alola as well, because why not? But when he and Maxi just fight again. Yeah, and it's weird how the thing works, but Archie does have a more subdued arc to him, and he goes, "If there was a trainer like you here from where I was from, would I, I be here now?" That is me. I I think Archie is like one of my favorite uh, leaders because of how human he feels. Yeah, and they definitely keep that humanity to him. Unlike the others, Cyrus is still weird, and Lysander's an asshole. <laughs> He's always been that. So oh, the way yeah. those... Oh no, here's how they do it. So for Maxi and Archie, you have to click these buttons behind a red and blue painting. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> for Cyrus, you get the... You get a card key, like what you would get in Diamond Pearl and Platinum. Mm-hmm. 
Lysander, he presents you with a choice. Press one button and you'll st and you'll save your world. Press the other button and you'll activate the ultimate weapon. For fun, I tried both. Both of them will activate the ultimate weapon. <laughs> oh, because great. of course they will. And then in order to try and stop the ultimate weapon, you have to press the other button. But before you can press the other button, Lysander fights you. It's like, dude, this is going to destroy the entire universe here. Can we cut the chitter chatter here? He doesn't care. He already succeeded in his universe. It ki the ultimate weapon killed you last time. <laughs> Why would you activate it again? <laughs> how did he you doesn't get learn from his mistakes. How did you get the ultimate weapon from Kalos to Alola? <laughs> um, ten Machamp. I'm pretty sure that needs more than ten Machamp. Ten Machamp and a Buzzwall. Also, <laughs> how come you got? Well, how come you're using Yvaltal in your team if you need Yvaltal for the ultimate weapon? <laughs> or Xerneas if you're playing with the sun. Why is that? What the hell are you thinking here? Don't question it. Kyroar man. Why? There's one oh, yeah, thing. One, uh, sorry, okay. one other thing with Rainbow Rocket. Throughout all of it, I was thinking, okay, they're going to be using their strongest force, so... Uh, Maxi's gonna have Primal Groudon, Archie's gonna have Primal Kyogre, etc. None of them have their Megas, none of them have their Primal Reversions into Lysander. And because I did him fourth, I was thinking, okay, they're not gonna give him- wait. Wait, why are you Mega Revolving Gyarados? Wait a minute! This wasn't part of the script! No! I understand they're from different universes, and I understand that, you know, from the third gen game, they had different, um, not the surgeon, but previous gen games they had like different um, designs. But why did they have to use Archie's third gen design when they have a so much better and already modeled, amazing sixth gen design? I don't know, either. And, and mainly, I would. I granted, I do like Maxi and Archie's original designs. But yeah, why put in the effort to make three models of those designs when you have their pro their Boras designs. I don't the other thing that I have a big question for is Getsis. Now Getsis's look is clearly meant to be black and white. Why? So he's got the he hasn't got the black motif for him, things like that. Yeah. His personality though is his black and white two personality. Where he knows Colrus, he's trying to set up a new puppet master in the form of Giovanni instead of N. And for some reason, he has one of the two Tower Dragons. He'll have Reshiram in Ultra Sun, and Zekrom in Ultra Moon, or the other way around. He'll have one of them in one of the games, the other one in the other game. Why doesn't he have Kira? This is a black... More mysteriously, this is a black and white team we're talking about. And for whatever, like, whatever reason, I always complain that the black, black and white team of Pokemon always puts in... Like stuff that I didn't like from black and white, but they say it's good anyway. I've been warming up more to black and white recently. And I think you might as well if you give it a, a replay. Especially if you play black 2 and white 2. I think those two are better than black and white 1. Yeah, I have one However, two. there are... Th however, there are things about it that, yeah, I agree, they shouldn't be here. For example, and I was saying this to you earlier today, why is Grimsley the one to give you Sharpedo? And this is the same thing for Sun and Moon 1, mind you. Why is Grim Grimsley the one to give you the Sharpedo when he was a dark user from Unova, so why is he wearing a in the first place? If he's meant to be from not New York. When another one that would work just as well would be a water user. Like Marlin from Black and White 2, who was the water gym leader. Wallace or Juan from... Ruby and Sapphire, which would make more sense seeing as he's giving you a Sharpedo. You know, but, the Hoenn Shark. Well, to be fair, I was saying to be fair that Sharpedo, uh, Grimsley had a Sharpedo, but only on a rematch in Black and White 1, and I think in Black and White 2, from what I read. Nope. No? Nope, he didn't. Well, he had one Black and White 1, so. Good yes. enough. But even then, why are you throwing Grimsley when, on Akala Island, we see Colas? 
we, we gotta have, we get, remember black and white, remember black and white happened, guys! Like, if you're gonna have both, then pick one character that was, like, pick one from Gen 5, you don't need both. He's and gonna... there are so many other places that other things could have worked for as well, like, instead of any of the water trainers, for example, why not have the trainer that keeps the sharp hater be, I don't know, Cynthia? You know what he's kind of like? That Gen 4 reference? <laughs> I wish Cynthia was here, but you know what he's kind of like? She's in the battle tree. Oh yeah, I remember that. But you know what gives me kind of like, though? What? Do you remember in uh, Gen 4, in Sinnoh, you go all the way to the final gym, which was uh, Sunny Shore. You go to Sunny Shore City, like on the bottom floor of Sunny Shore, you go in the north of the beach, and you see Jasmine just kind of sitting there, and she doesn't know what to do with herself. Yeah, but even then, that was a reference for the incoming Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Not to mention, she was apparently there for contests. She was there to perform. Yeah, but... So while she was at Sunny Shore and not Heart Home, that's another question entirely. <laughs> but there was enough there for you to go, okay, I can see why you've thrown her in there. Grimsley? Well, Grimsley was part of the Battle Tree, but otherwise... Eh, nothing. Ugh. Meh. Wait, what? Meh. Meh, Meh I say. Meh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it would have been cool if we saw like a fourth gen person, since fourth gen is supposed to be scheduled. Cynthia! What? Cynthia! <laughs> I know, but like, just standing there in the middle of somewhere, just handing you a Sharpedo, I mean. Oh, like how Chorus randomly gives you Flame Charge, Grimsley randomly gives you Sharpedo? Yeah. But I mean, why, why would it be a fortune if that was scheduled to be, like, the next thing you're supposed to tease? I mean, I understand it's the 20th anniversary, you know, game. It's just... okay. Well, the thing with it as well, like, for Sun and Moon in particular, having at least one reference to each of the generations would have worked in some form. So, you've got red and blue representing Gen 1 and to an extent Gen 2. That's fine. Wally in the Battle Tree is meant to represent Gen 3. I would have liked to have seen him earlier than that, but okay, whatever. Yeah. Cynthia, same as Wally. Gen 5, you've got Grimsley and Chorus. I don't know why you need both, but whatever. Gen and six. Gen 6, you've got Dexio and Sheena, I think that's how you Sheena. 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 It's Which puns. they. They're oh, puns. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. And yeah, yeah, they're there for the Zygarde quest. That works. Also, for some reason, I can't. Have you. Sorry. Why can't I fight Cena in the. Ultra Sun? Uh, isn't. Cena's in Ultra Sun that game, and Dexio's in Ultra Man? No, I have not been able to fight Cena in Ultra Sun. I fought Dexio again in Out the Front of the Hotel. Wait, really? Yeah. I think I think you find both. It's like Cena's first, and then you get Dexio. Well, in that case, it was Dexio first, Cena second. But it'll it'll really depend on when I can get to the pony planes. Yeah. Not those ponies. Shut up. <laughs> oh my god! I was even thinking that. <sighs> well, um... Couldn't resist. What else do we need to talk about Ultra Moon? What's on the back of the box? I mean, we... Uh, what do you think of the new Pokemon they added? Or... By new Pokemon, meaning the three new Pokemon, like two, three new forms. Let's run yeah, Let's run through them from the start. The first one is Dusk Form Lycanroc. Oh yeah. I got... I okay? Was I was kind of disappointed because I'm like, ooh, Dust Swarm Lycanroc, maybe I can use Lycanroc again. Because I have a rule that I can't use Pokemon the same generation, like, twice. So, I was like, oh, maybe I can use Lycanroc again. I looked at the stats, and all it was is just a slightly improved midday. Yeah. And not to mention, how you're supposed to get is a nightmare. Especially, Especially in Ultra Moon, it's w yeah, in Ultra Moon it's even worse. 
you know, you can only evolve it at dusk, so 5pm to 5.59pm in Ultra Sun. But because Ultra Moon happens at night when it's during the day, it means if you want to get dusk from Lycanroc, you need to be up at 5 in the morning. I am super morning person, man. I am such, you know, it's great. I am such a night owl that that I'm awake at 5 a.m. Just go dust yeah. like a rock. Well, I think for that one, I just changed the time on my 3DS, gave it a red candy, and changed the time back. <laughs> That's true. And even then, I stopped using it once I got to the new Diglett's Cave because I found a lava tar. But you hated training that thing. I did. Once it got to Tyranitar, it was great. Getting to Tyranitar, though, was a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> Why can a ground type not learn a ground type move until their 50s? Why is Scooptar constantly being one shot by everything but water moves? Why? Oh. Why? Why? I was training a Shogun in Ultra Sun. Better? Sort of? It's more durable than the Pupa Tower is, but... And if the fact that it learns a Dragon-type move before level 50 is cool, what's good? Good job, Shogun. You're already... you're already up there. You're way better than Pupa Tower is. And yeah. for some reason, I was stupid enough and haven't forgot my experiences with Lafayette that for my Ultra Sun team, I went for two of those late-game Pokémon that takes you ages to level up. Because my Ultra Sun team has got a Metang and Shell God. I am so sorry. I kind of, I kind of cheated on my team a little bit because I, I want to use some of the um, Island Scan Pokemon. So I got Chandelure and the other and the and the Ralph, which I then evolved into a Gallade by totally not going back to Moon to get the only Dawnstone in that game. No, of course not. Nah, I didn't do that. Oh, if it helps, you know, it was earlier on in the game when I was limiting myself to what to the Pokemon when I was only had as my party, in order to quickly power level, I would send it back to Sun, train in Victory Road, and get a few levels, then send it right back. Yeah, I try not. The only thing I did with my moon is just, just to trade certain evolutionary items, which was. What was it? I only traded a Dusk Stone and a Dawn Stone, and that's all I needed. Which is fair enough. And for the record, with my Ultra Moon, I did play it far more legit. The only times I really sent Pokemon to Sun was if I needed a move that they weren't going to learn for some time. Like, for example, I was really needing a ground type move, so I sent Pupitar over to Sun, taught it Earthquake, and then sent it right back. Yeah. As a TM, of course. Oh, of course. Um, what was, I I used a lot of Pokemon that I wanted to use, but like I didn't in the original moon. So Mudsail was good. Um, oh, my total MVP was my Alolan Muck Milkshake. <laughs> yes, he has the best name, and I'm so proud of him because. You must admit, even though the Ultra was had kind of a weaker story, the build-up to Necrozma was amazing. It was. And when you see the Ultra form, that was so good. I got... There's a game I, I played way back called One Shot, and I got a lot of One Shot vibes from, from Necrozma. I can imagine. Yeah, I think I, I actually reviewed One Shot, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. Yeah, I did, and um, I got a lot, a lot of that vibe. And the only way I was able to defeat Ultra Necrozma is that I, I uh, poison jabbed him. The poison touch. No, I'm sorry. It was Poison Fang that badly poisoned him. Ultra Necrozma kept trying to wipe through my team, but he died of toxic before he was able to kill me. That is the only reason I killed, like I defeated Ultra Necrozma. I think I didn't have that many issues with it when I fought it, but that's because I adopted the ultra cheap strategy of when buying dragons, and I sent in the bumblebee. The bumblebee? The <laughs> bumblebee. Oh no! What does Rabami do? Bug fairy. Da 
Dazzling Gleam. Really powerful bug type moves. Dazzling Gleam. <laughs> Dead. Actually, I don't think I did that for for Ultra Necrozma. I definitely did that for Kamo O. Sorry. Como O. I keep thinking the final one is a Kamo O. The Sun. When I was fighting Ultra Necrozma, I did basically spam fairy type moves. Hello, Pre Marina's Moonblast. I was actually kind of scared of Totem Komo O. Because I'm just. I w walked in and I'm like, I have Pre Marina. I'm fine. And I walk in and Komo O is like, hey, stuff. Guess who, guess who has a. Guess who has po uh, Poison Jab? Hey, let me call my friend Caesar over here. He came prepared. I, yeah, he came way more prepared than last time because last time in Sun, I one shot him with Rabombi. Yeah. Oh. It's <laughs> hello, free fa hello, free Draconium Z. Though what did help with making Como O a lot harder was the fact that you don't get Therium Z be right before the boss battle. Yeah. Oh, speaking of to like totems and such, I love the changes to um, the uh, trials. I do as well, and it added a lot more difficulty to them, and there were some that made a lot more sense. I think Kiawe having a totem Marowak makes a lot more sense than totem Salazzle. Yeah, but I still think even I hated Araquanid. That Araquanid like kind of messed my team up in terms of composition. Because I was originally planning to have a grass type, but I needed a flying type to defeat a rock when in. When I, th when, true story for this one. When I was going out to that one for the first, I was like, okay, we gotta move all the wishy washy downstream. Okay, it's just it's gonna be totem wishy washy again. Okay. I then noticed that some of these spots have dewpiders in them. I don't think anything of it, and I think, okay, whatever. I get down to the bottom. The totem wishy-washy is starting to form, and then I see these two giant eyes coming in from behind it, like, wait, what? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that, yeah, that's a throw-off, and I think, I, I, I like totem wishy-washy more, because it made more sense. It did. Yeah, but, and, ugh, I, that was like one of the worst fights for me. Ugh. I only had... Especially I only have one type. It completely destroyed my team first time through because I was expecting the wishy-washy. So I was preparing for the wishy-washy battle. And then, so I had Fomantis in the front because wishy-washy, it's not going to have any ice type moves. I was destroyed with grass type. Aquanid is bug water. It knew Bubble, Aurora Beam, and Leech Light. So, yeah, Rock when it came prepared, and that was annoying. Yeah, and it summons Dew Fighters, which also know Leech Life and Bubble. I'm, I'm not complaining because they came prepared like Kamo'o did. It's just that a Rock when it is kind of harder to get around because of his strange typing. And I just think that Wishy Washy just made more sense for that battle. And Wishy Washy was tough in the original as well. Yeah, it was. I'm not complaining that was hard, I'm just complaining it. I'm just saying that it made more sense in the original. Yeah. Let's actually go through the totems because some of them are completely different. With sure. Illima's Trial, it's still the gumshoes or Raticate, depending on what version you're playing. The only cool Lana's... thing. Wait, wait, oh, wait. Yeah, go on. Before you go, the only cool thing about the first trial is that in Bird and Cave, you can't annoy that. Yep. Which I did for my ultra ultra moon run, and yeah. I love my noises. Last trial we already covered. Malice trial removed the, one of the best scenes from the original uh, Sun and Moon. Well, actually, first off, there was Kiawe with the Turn Marowak, which he came a bit more prepared as well. Oh, that fight was tough for me. Even yeah. Though I had a, even though I had a water, it was also. I don't think it was Primarina then, I still think it was a Brion, but still, Poison Wolf. Yeah. Toxic and, then, and Hex. Oh, and Venoshock, which does more damage if you're poisoned. Yeah, they, they came prepared. Yeah. And then, yeah, like you said, the, the Malice still got the Lorantis, which 
admittedly, I would have preferred it to be in Serena. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that much better, actually. Yeah, especially because in the anime, Mallow has currently a steamy, but it was a bound sweet, so. Strangely enough, you can't find wild bound sweet for whatever reason. Nope, but you can find steamy, and you can you can't find. Find wild Alolan Geodude, but you can find wild Alolan Graveler. Oh yeah, that's a thing too. That's so weird. I like it because by that point in the game, they the next time you level them up, they're going to be Steeny or Graveler. Yeah. So you're basically just skipping a step. Yeah, but it's so much annoying when you're going for the decks. Ugh. Unless you're me and did it last time. <laughs> Yeah, but lucky for you, you actually had a you actually had Pokebank this time around and another 3DS, I guess. Yeah, I do. There you go. I, I'm like so tight for money, I can't even afford Pokebank at the moment. Hopefully for Christmas. Monica. <laughs> I mean, Back I'm to... I'm working. I'm just waiting. I'm just I have to check when I get paid. Fair enough. Um. Oh yeah, and, Ma and Malastra, they removed one of the best parts from the original. Press A to pound. That and... <laughs> I'm surprised that got over the censor board in the first place, but on top of that, one other thing I'm glad they changed is you don't need Stoutland anymore. Yeah. That... Thank you. Yeah, the, the, tra like, the changes to the, the grass trial was pretty fun, actually. Yeah. Except for and one... I do know that there is one spot where you can look your boy a battle. If you go to the to the first patch we have to be very if you go to the furthest one away, no Fermantus was looking for that berry, so none will try and find it. Yeah. In the fir in the first one, like the Foma like I knew the Formantis one. And like the third one with the pseudo one tree is actually not a pseudo on a normal tree and it's like clear as day. I don't understand. Ah. I don't understand the flower one for Pompei. Nor do I. Yeah. Did you get understand the Sudowoodo one? I didn't even notice the Sudowoodo one. And in fact, when I was getting the honey, I got another Fomantis again. I didn't get a Pompei. Well, oh yeah, it was Fomantis. I got confused because Pompei is the one that collects flowers. But um. But yeah, I didn't understand the flower one at all. Yeah, nor did I, honestly. Yeah, throughout that bell, I only got one optional for Mantis. Hmm, eh, better than nothing. Yeah, I only got one thing wrong. Hmm. Um, so I will say that, and we'll get to it when we get to the final trial, while Mello doesn't have the press 8 pounds, she does still have. She's got an even uh, weirder scene in the final trial. Lana, when she's with Lana, the secret. Oh yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we go to the final trial. Yeah. Um, when I was like, after grass. Um, is this? It's a little worse right? than last time. We're not. We're not counting the. Hello? Hello. 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 Can you hear Hello. me? Hello! Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, that was weird. Don't know what happened there. But, I was saying after grass is electric, right? Yes. Not including the ground trials, but those are the same result. We're skipping out those. Yeah. So, electric trial was, a, was really fun. Don't you just love Savenger Bug? <laughs> yeah, I think Electric Trial had a better had a better totem overall. Oh yeah, I can't speak overall because the original one was just kind of more of a bug trial than an Electric Trial. And yeah, especially because you've technically got the bug trial in Po Town with Guzma, so. Yeah, and Totem Toj Tomorrow or Tog Tomorrow, whatever his name is, is so good. Such an angry, such an angry big boy. I was surprised at how big that Tokutamaru was, like... 
Because we see it in the, we saw it in the initial announcement trailer, that cutscene with the Toka Tomorrow, that's the totem Toka Tomorrow. Yeah. And I didn't think it would be that big. But you see Totem Token Tomorrow next to a real Token Tomorrow, and it's like, holy crap! He's such a good, big, angry boy. <laughs> I, th th well, that's what they do. Like, the totems are bigger than most Pokemon. But you can get Totem. You do have the ability to get Totem Pokemon via Totem Secrecy use, but I think they're more of a novelty thing than anything. Yep, even though that's one of the reasons why I started with the sun. Wait, to get all the Totems? Yep. And and of course Pennywise. Oh yeah. Blaze Cephalon is kinda tragic. He's I love his design, but he has one of the most shallowest move balls. From what I've seen, yeah, but even still, I'm, as soon as I get one I'm calling it Pennywise. I mean totally. I I don't I don't blame you. I, I um I started a challenge for myself to get all Ultra Beast, Shiny, and Stack Attack. I love Stack Attacka. I got Shiny Stack Attacka and named him Jenga. Yeah, and because of how the spelling for it, every time we refer to it just in conversation, we keep going Stack Attack, 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 Do I have to refer back to the tweet? Well, at least better than Xbox One, 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 Yada. I'm going back to the tweet. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting the tweet. I'm gonna like post it. While, while you do that, Acerola's trial is pretty much the same thing, though. It, I, I don't know about you, but that Mimikyu hits harder. Yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> the trial itself wasn't changed, if not for the ending. And that was a like, legit scary. Yeah. Oh, I found the tweet. Do you want me to read the tweet? Feel free to. <clears throat> I practice this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like put, the, I'm gonna like uh, put the link in. I'm gonna send you the link so you can put it in the video. But uh, a stack attack of stack a stack attack is attacking the back of a stack of stack snacks and shacks of stack sacks and black jacks and shacks on track. <laughs> oh, Arceus, what have we done? I am the master of Fox and Socks. Yes, you are. One one thing I like about Sack Attacker is that, like, there's a room inside Sack Attacker. It's called Trick Room. And not only that, Sack Attacker is pretty much the slowest Trick Room user. So I can just imagine if after he sets down Trick Room, he just goes, Mew! <laughs> 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 He's simultaneously the slowest and the fastest. Yeah. Though, to go back to Acerol's trial, I do agree. It's pretty much the same right until near the end. Right before you see the totem Mimikyu, you see an illusion of Acerola. Which is going like, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. And I'm constantly getting louder and louder and... Assumingly loud. Admittedly, half of that, I was honestly half expecting that to actually be possessed Acerola, and part of the trial would be having to fight Acerola. That's what I was thinking was going to be going into it, but it turns out, it, no, it's just an illusion. Yeah. I mean, nothing, I mean, despite that little cutscene change, nothing of Mimikyu's trial got really changed. No. Then, of course, there's the pseudo bug type one which is your boy big bad guzma it's your boy i swear he got harder this game because there have been so many times where i keep all of his pokemon have now just seemed to have gone so ridiculously fast and so ridiculously strong i honestly think that they're hacked pokemon I mean, how am, how is this pincer one-shotting my entire team okay that's it Two cannon, you know what to do. Supersonic Sky Force laziness, go. Uh, you forgot the Galisapod. <laughs> oh damn it! Uh, oh wait, Rotom Dex just gave me, just gave me my my uh, Z move back. Are you ready, Chandelure? Burn them. Speaking of, speaking of, Rotom Dex never actually did that for me in Ultra Moon. Really? 
but it is constantly doing it for me in Ultra Sun. What gives? He wa he he wanted to be nicer, so you stop, so you can stop telling him to shut up. That doesn't help. You're still annoying. I I kind of like it when Rotom Dex does that. Cause it's it's a it's like easy mode at that point, but it's like let me give you another nuke, Rotom. Thanks, Rotom. Yeah. Now if only you could, if only you could keep giving me those. Yeah, if you utilize Rotom Dex, the game actually be becomes slightly easier because of Roto Boost. Yeah. And I think I think that's how they like, you know, help the curve with newcomers. It's like, oh, newcomers want Ultra Moon, then just give them Rotom. Yeah. Uh, Although I do like Rotom Catch. Yeah, Rotom Catch helps a lot. To go back to the trials, though, Pony Island is where a lot of the changes really come into play. So there are so many changes to them. The dragon, the dragon one with the Como O, that's pretty much the same. Not, not, but not really. He, he's more stronger and more more prepared for fairies. Yeah, he's, his moveset is different, but the trial itself is pretty much the same. You're still fighting the Jangmo, Hakamo O, then Como O. Yeah. But then afterwards, after you get done with Ultra Megaropolis, then you fight Hapu after you fight Mina's trial. Mina's got her own trial now, and that is honestly one of the sweetest trials. I love the fairy trial. The fairy trial, you just go back to all the original trials and fight and rematch the trial captains naturally. Yeah. But what the weirdest part was, in... Moon, you fight uh, Lana, and then Sun, you fight Malo. Apparently, I cannot confirm that. No, no, you you do. I remember because when you go back to the grass trial in Moon, Malo is incapacitated, so Lana is like, "Oh, okay, do you want to fight me?" <laughs> and it and yeah, and the way she was incapacitated is. Um, he, she just got high off of Fair, uh, not Faramosa, I, I'm getting confused with my shiny hunting, no. She got high off of, um, what, what, what's the pre-evolution of Lorantis again? Fomantis. Fomantis, I was close. Yeah, she's she just kind of there. <laughs> she's and when I looked at it, when I looked at it, I went, wait, did they just confirm that the grass type trainers that specialize in grass types are all potheads? Because that's what everyone thinks Erica is. <laughs> I was gonna mention Erica. <laughs> like this is this is Pokemon's equivalent of a pothead. I mean it's now made canon. I mean Gardenia Mallow is now drunk. To be to be fair, Gardenia is a hippie. Mallow in the anime goes to a bar frequently run by an Oranguru. Yeah. I'm still creeped out by those hand movements. Oh yeah, and like, like that 60 out. FPS hand movements. That one wasn't mine. Did you did you see Turtonator jumping on a jump rope? Hello? Okay, that one was my one. Something about the network at the moment is going into the fret so I'm looking into it. Neutrality is not a thing, right? How can this happen? The hell? Oh, call a drop. <laughs> yeah. I said that neutrality and everything wrong. La 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 Part of it was on my end, my router's having frets at the moment, and net neutrality isn't really affected here. Lucky you. I, I Not really, I went to that still shit. Uh, I hear about the it. Only reason why, the only reason why net neutrality isn't a thing here is because we have other internet problems. <laughs> you, your internet's too much of a problem to even care about net neutrality. Exactly. Oh god. This happens every year, and I'm growing tired of it. Hold up, Chuck. We were talking about what trial again? Oh yeah, the fairy trial. 
potheads. Potheads. We were talking about potheads. Potheads and drunks, because Mama's more of a drunk than a pothead. Yeah. Um. Though, to go back onto the whole pothead sort of thing, thing Mina is actually a lot better in this one because it might have just been me, but I swear in regular Sun and Moon she was a stoner as well. A stoner, drifter, in the original Sun and Moon. I think she's more of a hippie, but I don't know about stoner. She's more grounded this time and it actually gives her a much better personality. Yeah. I mean, she actually has a purpose. Rather than just being a random boss in the well, in the Ultra Beast campaign in Sun and Moon. Yeah. For a random reason. I mean, I mean, for whatever re like the Elite Four was strange. Before I go to the Elite Four, there's one like missed opportunity they could have had here. And that is. So in Malay City, yeah. In Malay City, they added a little gem, which isn't much, it ju it's just kind of novelty. It's like, hey, this is a Kento, and we have that dragon guy here from the first game that challenges, randomly challenges you. I'm pretty sure. And we also designed the dun we also designed the gym around Lieutenant Surge. The worst gym. <laughs> and they and they have, they have like, the Surge badge, but just as yeah. a replica. So in the fairy trial, she or she um, Mina tells you to go get uh, different colored petals. That would have been great if she made like a shoddy version of Erica's, you know, Erica's rainbow badge, but they didn't, and that's just a that was a missed opportunity. Eh, the flower that gets made at the end is close enough. I guess I'm not, but it doesn't really look too much like it, I would say. Yeah, it worked, basically. Yeah. Uh, before we go to the Elite Four as well, you know, another major change was Victory Road in Mount Lanakila. Oh yeah, it's actually- That's actually now more like a rain- that's now- I was about to say Rainbow Road. That's more like a Victory <laughs> Road now! <laughs> I mean, game. you're not too far off from Rainbow Road. Because, because while I was playing my boyfriend, he's just like, oh, and I was about to go into the room where he was, I'm like, what's wrong? And he's like, get an, get a synchronized Abra. And I'm like, why? Get a synchronized Abra! And so I went back to the Pokemon Center, got a synchronized Abra, went back, and there, lo and behold, was a crater with a Necrozma in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he doesn't even put up a fight, he just gives up and- Wait, does he put up a fight? I can't remember. If he did, I didn't see it. I threw a quick ball at it. Oh, so he tries to fight you. Okay. Yeah. He tries to fight you, but quick ball. Yeah. Quick balls are the pseudo master balls of the Pokemon universe. <laughs> it's just- it's just kind of off awesome. it. It's just kind of awful. You're going through Victory Road, and all you see is this giant crater with a necrozma in it. Ah, that's uh. what happened to you. Hi there, buddy. Remember me? <laughs> bad, bad day, huh? Yeah, I know. Here, why don't you have a taste of this quick ball? Yeah. And then Chorus gives you the tools that you need to fuse Sogaleo or Lunala to Necrozma. Because he was just kind of waiting behind a rock until someone just went up there and captured it. I was waiting here for plot importance. <laughs> Thanks, Internet Explorer man. <laughs> I wait. I will wait here until the plot requires me. Away! <laughs> that was great. And then he comes back again for Rainbow Rocket. Oh yeah. I thought... Chorus. He will... Chorus man. He will appear whenever the plot requires him. Cool, Rishman! Away! Was he like that in the in Black and White too? Not really. Oh, okay. What happened to Cole him? Cool, Man! What happened to him for him to be so nice? Well, he was never evil in Black and White too. He was he was just kind of doing his job. Pretty much. Oh, okay. And his job just happened to slightly align with Team Plasma, which is why he worked for them. But he was never evil. He was just there. 
Thanks, Chorus. I am not Chorus. I am Chorus Man. Don't call him Chorus Man. That's not like his. I like his secret identity is Chorus. His hero identity is Internet Explorer Man. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't roll off the tongue quite as well as Chorus Man. <laughs> That's true. Here's the new superhero. I'm gonna keep doing that every time I say that. <laughs> Oh yeah, speaking of Chorus Man, um, what's kind of funny about Necrozma and and Nunala and Zekrom, Nunala and Zekrom. Uh, Zekrom, where do you come from? <laughs> I'll get to Zekrom. Nunala and Sogalio is that it's kind of the same as Kirim with Zekrom and uh, Reshiram. Yeah. It's just that so they fixed the one issue that I have with Reshiram. Zekrom and Kirim, in the fact that it's possible to get both of them in the both forms of of Necrozma in the one game. Why is that not fixed, Game Freak? Well, technically not, because even though you do get a second Cosmog, that Cosmog will still evolve into a Lunala if you have Moon. You need to trade that Cosmog to Sun to train it and evolve it into Solgaleo. Yeah, but at least you. The issue with it that I personally had was that the DNA splices wouldn't let you get both Black or Black Reshiram. Black Kirim and White Kirim. Wait, really? Yeah, yeah, it won't do it. How does it work? I don't know why, but for some reason, if you have either Black or White Kirim made, the DNA splicer won't let you do it again. And. If you think, okay, well, I'll just transfer them through the Pokemon makeover. Nope, you can't do that either because they count as two Pokemon. Mm. Which is why you also can't trade Black or White Kirim. I mean, don't you need to unfuse... Thanks, Game Freak! I mean, don't you need to unfuse them, trade them over, and then fuse them again? Yep. But you can't... You can only have one fusion for Kirim. You can't have both. But can you have a Kirim and a... Reshiram and another Kirim and a Zekrom? Nope, you can't. Well, you can have you can have those, but you can't use the two Kirims into black or white Kirim. You can only have one. Trust me, I tried. But why would you try to fuse Kirim into another Kirim? No, I tried fusing Kirim with Zekrom and then the other Kirim with Reshiram. Oh, you can't have two at once. No, you can't. Is it- it's not- not the same with Necrozma? I'm not sure yet, I haven't tested it out yet, because I'm going to be getting the Sogaleo and Necrozma from Ultra Sun and fusing them in Ultra Moon. Yeah. Uh, by the way, thanks for the adamant. I didn't realize how much better Dusk was over Dawn. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for letting me know that I should be trying to get either a Jolly or Adamant in Ultra Sun. Yeah, go for Jolly if you want a Necrozma. And I was wrong about Timid uh, Necrozma Dawn Wings because a lot of people are using it as a um, as a Trick Room user, for, strangely enough. Hmm. Yeah, I'm using I'm using an Adamant one because because <laughs> I was a fool a fool not to get Jolly. But I'm using an adamant one because I want to make final boss, which is just going to be a boosted necrozma. I saw that video that you posted, and oh god, that's terrifying. I didn't. I didn't officially post a video. It's just. It's just. Well, a, you sent it to me. Yeah. Maybe you can. You can. Maybe you can post it in this video so everyone else can see it. I'm not sure about that. If you'll probably have, it'll probably have to be done via screen capture, but. No, I if it's no, there, I sent if you... it's here, it will be at the end. Yeah, no, I sent you a. It was a replay battle on Showdown. Yeah, you, it'll have to. It'll have to be screen capture of the replay as well. No, it wasn't. No, you don't have to. It's replays from Showdown are are like copied in a URL and pasted, and it, I think it will yep. always be there. Okay. Yeah, because I sent. Well, I was going to add it into the video, so oh, if okay. I want to put it in the video, I'll need to screen capture. The video of okay. the replay. Yeah, I just made I just made a final boss team, and that that's what came out of it. Which, speaking of, we should probably we should do a 
recording of a battle that we do on Showdown with our with our main teams. I wish it was so we can see who truly has the better Pokemon. Yeah, I kind of wish we could have done it on the original, but we have no way to record the original. And right now, I'm still saying for a Feromosa. Yeah, and currently my Ultra Zone team is not fit for battle. <laughs> I mean, do you want to make do you want to make your Ultra Moon team or Ultra Sun team? I'll make both, and we can do one. We can do a round each and see who, which one truly is better. Oh, okay. Um, should we do that? It'll like, just take me a while because I'm making two teams. Should we do that like in the recording, or like should we do that as we're recording? Well, we can make the teams as we're recording, but we'll do we'll do the battle after we finish recording, so that way we can screen capture it, and then I'll just do it in the video afterwards. Make and do this after we record. It probably would be actually yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Anyway. I'm just gonna add some amount of help when I'm doing. Yeah. So on to the Elite Four. That is mostly the same except for one key difference. For whatever reason they only changed one No two uh, battles, and that's pretty much it. The first battle was a change in the Elite Four themselves, and it's- Well, yeah, there's one Elite Four change, and then there's the final match, but- Yeah. The only Elite Four change is that Hala is no longer a member of the Elite Four. It is now- uh, Molian. The, the Steel type user. Which I'm kind of yeah. weird. Which is kind of weird because I would appreciate Hollow more. I kind of want Moline to replace that random flying girl that appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, and admittedly, I'm fine with Hala not being there because he's already got a lot of screen presence, being the grandfather of How? Hal. Yeah. So I'm fine with him not being in the Elite Four. Yeah. But yeah. I still don't know why they keep bringing back that random flying trainer. I don't who, She is in the story as well, mind you. Wait, when? Her her biggest contribution to the story in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is when you go to get the flying MC, she stands behind you going, Oh, you have that? Here, let me show you how you use it. <laughs> See you in the Elite Four. <laughs> Pretty much. Because I needed to get flying in because I was using two cannon. I'm like, wait, I need to go back. What are you... <laughs> Who are you? Yeah, it's like, and I hate when you get like Psychium and Iceium. It's like I automatically know what I'm doing. Yeah, man. that's just a weird gameplay thing over story because the same thing is like that for uh, Incineroar's uh, Incineroar's Z Crystal, which is actually a Dark type Z Crystal, but by the time you get it, you haven't actually first. There's Nano yet, so you don't actually know the Z pose for the Dark type. But you do it anyway. At least it's better than it was in Sun and Moon, where you could do the Dark type one before you got the Dark type Z crystal. You had no idea how to use Flyium, Iceium, Psychium, or Buggyium. You Granted, those last three you still don't know how to use anyway, but you can still somehow do them. You, you still don't know how to do Buggyium and Poisonium. Nobody teaches you, you just automatically know what you're doing. I don't think I've ever actually used the poison the poison sea crystal. I have no idea what it's poses. I did it, it's pretty it's pretty sweet, because I have milkshake, my muck. I love him. <laughs> but I I use it, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet, I I must admit. I think I used it on Rabombi. One thing I do love is Primarina's exclusive Z Crystal, Oceanic Operetta. Yeah. That is that just looks so nice. Oh, Incineroar. I use that I use Incineroar on my original moon and my boyfriend who was playing alongside me was using Incineroar as well. In Ultra. He named his Incineroar Tiger Millionaire. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh no, I broke you! <laughs> what the?
Tiger Millionaire. Yeah, it, it was a um, it was a reference from Steven Universe, where Steven dressed up as as a wrestler and called and called his persona Tiger Millionaire. <laughs> that is amazing. He couldn't fit it. His name in game was Millionaire, but you just called him Tiger Millionaire. Close enough. <laughs> Wait, what? Close enough. Yeah, and every time he uses the Z crystal, he always says, And in this tote corner, it's Tiger Millionaire! And, it... <laughs> <laughs> and it's so perfect. I love Incinero Z move just for that. Oh my god! <laughs> And to this okay, I think I'm good now. And to this day, but, I've yet to use Rowlet. Yeah, I used... Oh my jaw. <laughs> oh no, I broke. <laughs> oh. I used Rowlet for my original run through of Sun. <laughs> it was known as... He was originally known as Blathers until I got to Sidui. In which case, I renamed him to Owlivo Queen. What? Owl Owlever? Yeah, in DC, the the Green Arrow. Right. His his normal his human name. Oh, it's Oliver. Not his superhero name is Oliver Queen. And then he named so, him Owlever. Owlever Queen. That's pretty. That's pretty <laughs> sweet. I like that. And for Primarina, I couldn't call my Primarina it because. I got a male one from the original oh, catches. Yeah. But I do have a female Brione, which I called Sonata. Yeah. When I when I got um, I, I originally had a female Litten in, in Moon, and I was like, oh yeah, female Incineroar. That's just so cool. You would never expect it to be a female, and I named it Mars because I was kind of uncreative. In this game, I am also semi uncreative. I was hoping for a male, but I got a female anyway, and I didn't feel like going through the entire thing just to reset for another um, Poplio, so I'm like, uh, whatever. I named, I named it Kesha after a uh, after a singer who... Yeah, I know, who, I know who Kesha is. Yeah. At least on the plus side, the stars are apparently not shiny locked, so that's an option. Uh, wait. Oh yeah, I mean, the star's never been shiny locked, but you can breed for them anyway, so... I think in Gen 6 they were shiny locked. No, they weren't. Yeah. I, re I remember <laughs> I remember day one people getting shiny mittens. Well, Gen 6, so... Oh, Gen 6. Right. Yeah, but in the original Sun and Moon they weren't shiny locked. Yeah. Uh. Which, on the, sp on the subject of shiny locked, why are the Tapus not shiny... Why are the Tapus shiny locked again? I don't know. Like, all the Ultra Beasts are not shiny locked, which is awesome. For whatever reason, Poison... But... Wait, what? Yeah. While the rest of the Ultra Beasts aren't, Poipol is... Sogaleo Lunala because Nebi is... Poi... Necrozma is... No, Poipol... Poipol is not shiny locked. It's just that he's not affected by the, uh... Shiny charm for whatever reason. I don't understand that, but yeah. it is possible to get shiny poison. Okay, yeah, well, I'm probably gonna get shiny poison in Generation Eight when that becomes available because I can't be bothered trying to go through this again just for a shot a second, a third, and fourth poison because you only get one in this game. Yeah, I remember when poison came out. I was just like reading off the leaks and just like. Here, let me get a, let me get a paper. I'm, I'm just like reading it. Just you know, put it close to my face. I'm like, Poipo. Poipo. His name is Poipo. <laughs> How fitting. I, I just had to read it slowly to myself every time. Just Poipo. It's just purple, but pronounced stupidly. Yeah. Naganadel is. Well, to be. To be fair, Pokemon aren't above things like that. Like, for example, oh, what's Ekans spelled backwards? Snake. What's Arbok spelled backwards? Cabra! 
Sorry, I because I reviewed J.I. Joe earlier this a few what new few weeks ago, that's so why. Oh, I was get, I was getting kinda confused be, because every time I hear Arbuck in the anime it always sounds like you think No, I was trying to go for Cobra Commanders. Yeah. Cobra. That's G.I. Joe, right? Yeah. Yeah. I had never thought I'd see anything more American than the live-action Transformers movies, but apparently I was wrong. Oh no. Well, I mean, GI Joe is based off armies, so. Yeah, and the show is literally called GI Joe: A Real American Hero. It's like, okay then. <laughs> yeah. This is a really weird army, but whatever. Oh yeah, it's beyond the Ultra Beast we we're talking about. What do you think of the Ultra Recon Squad? What about them? Honestly, like they they exist for exposition dumps about the Krosma, and that's about it. Yeah, that's true. Their their designs are half and half. Solaria from the Moon and Dulce from Sun are kind of banned, and it's kind of sad because they're the ones who have Poipo. Yeah. Zazi from but Sun and Spiko, otherwise known as Mr. Mustache Man from Moon. Like, I love their designs. Yeah, and they've got good designs, the other two not so much, but they just exist for exposition dumps, and I don't care. I mean, it kind of, I kind of find that it's cool that they come from the Ultra Dimension, but they could have done so much more with their characters, but they just don't. Yeah, like, they're literally just there. And, and kind of like what you're saying about Mr. Chorus Man. Um, this Chorus Man, not Mr. Um, Chorus Man! <laughs> they're just kind of there for plot convenience, and they're like, hey, do you need to go in the Ultra Wormhole? Don't worry, you could borrow our Sogalio if you're playing Moon, or Lunala if you're playing Sun. Yeah, and when I saw it, I was like, wait, why didn't you do this the first time? Because <laughs> they, they weren't there in the original. No, not in, I mean in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Why didn't you let Lusamine use them in order to get to where you need, where she needed to go? Which would mean why do they need to bother with you know, Cosmo at all? Things like that. Like, if you had a legendary that could travel through the dimensions right here, why did you not use that? Do you think that, do you think that, um, Virgil was like a failed one? I don't know. I don't know. That then just ruin the story. As I was saying, Sun and Moon has a better story in Ultra. Yeah. And I think I know the reason why. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon focus more on the player. It is the player's story, which that's fine. It's been done to death before, but okay, that's fine. Sun and Moon is focused on the on Lusamine's family, Gladion, Lily, and Lusamine. Yeah, if anything, in the original... At the cost of the player. In the original Sun and Moon, you were more of a meddler than anything. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> All good. So, yeah, it's just... They hype the Ultra Recon squad up so much, you think they're going to play such a big role, and they do nothing. They only, they only present you with a fun little minigame of hunting shinies in Ultra Space, and that's really it. That and they just exist here look, hmm, there are strange readings of light, there are strange light readings here. Okay, let's go to the next spot. Walk away. Wait, you didn't even check if it's shiny. Why are you checking Iki Town oh. for aura oh, oh, no, oh no, wait, I know what you mean. Yeah. The only thing that the only thing I want to point out about Ultra Recon Squad, at least for Moon, because I didn't see in Sun, please put your glasses back on. I don't like you staring at me like that. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna um, upset the child, and the child is me. Yeah. <laughs> I hate it when they have their glasses off because it scares it legit scares me. Yeah, and there's no reason for it to be that scary. It's just it's unnerving. <laughs> and when I saw them without the glasses on, I was like, oh god, what is the anime going to do? Are they even going to be in the anime? I don't know. 
they somehow managed to fit black and white two into the Nova arc. Did they? I mean, I was, I didn't. Some... I only, I only got back into the anime since Gen Six. Yeah, I don't know how they managed to do it, but basically, from what I remember, they have Ash go through black and white one story, get destroyed in the Elite in the Pokemon League again, and then the and then the anime is supposed to go. Oh shit, Gen Six isn't ready yet. Um, oh look, here's a bit of you know that they haven't explored yet. Let's go on a cruise for a season. Yeah, yeah. Wait, what season? What season was that? What were they doing? At uh, the last season of Best Wishes. Oh yeah, was was that the season they encounter Meloetta and uh, Cynthia? Nope. That was in the regular black and white arc. Okay. I have to Best wishes is weird. Yeah, I have to say the X and Y was alright, but Sun and Moon anime was so good so far. And it's been getting better. Like, it had a really rocky start at the start, but it is getting a lot better. Yeah. Which I'm grateful for, because when I saw the initial teasers for it, I was like, Oh god, we're getting another best wishes. No, it's so much better. No! It's so much better. And Thanks. and Ash is in a I don't think Ash is a complete idiot. <laughs> like in best wishes. He's a lot more enthusiastic like he was in Best Wishes. Which uh, okay, I can kinda get to an extent. And but I still liked it better in X and Y, because he felt more grounded. He was still at the Ash we all knew, but he was a lot more grounded, which actually made him stronger. What I liked about Ash in X and Y, I mean, he still had a story, yeah, but the purpose of his character in X and Y is for everyone to look up at it, up, up to him. Like, this is a trainer that people aspire to be. And that's, yeah, yeah that's fine. I, I like that. Um, but even then, his character was still kind of done to death, and honestly, the X and Y formula is, like, derived from since Gen 3, I would say. And, you know, the whole, the whole formula of just meeting different Pokemon in, in the woods somewhere and just going on to the next part of the woods and meeting another Pokemon. You know, you know that kind of formula? Yeah, and that's the strength of Sun and Moon, where it's got a more central location, you're going, you, it actually feels like a journey, like a more grounded journey. It's, yeah, it, I mean, they're not walking on foot from A to B, sure, but it, it, you get attached to way more characters within a school setting. Yeah. And certain episodes- Plus as well, because they, they're not letting Ash get a team of six straight away, you're getting more attached to everyone else's Pokemon. You get a, you're a lot more attached to Lana's Poplio, you know, Sophocles' Togedemaru, things like that. Kawhi, don't forget about Kawhi's Turtonator. Oh God, I love him. <laughs> I felt so sorry for that Turtonator when Lana, when that they had to swap Pokemon partners, and he got stuck with Lana and Lana's sisters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it ends up good for him, because he's just got a good cleaning. Yeah. And I like the fact that um, Kiawe used Popolio's balloons to basically give the Tauros a bath. Oh yeah, that that was good. I, I like Kiawe in the anime, because you never expect him to be like a... I mean, I know he li lived in in a, the ranch in-game, but you never actually see that. No. He's a, basically a big old softie. Yeah, Kawhi Kawhi is great. Yeah. Uh, I love what they did with Lily's character. I like, I like Gladion a lot better in the anime too. I haven't seen much of Gladion, so I'm not sure either way. Lily, I do like, but I think the joke is getting a little bit old. What the joke of her not touching Pokemon? Yeah, and like they dedicated a whole episode of that the treasure hunt with the Stoutland. And Lily did next to nothing except trying to get closer and closer to the stout one. No. Which, okay, that was funny. For no, a no, while, it's not. But... No, it's not a joke. It's tragic. 
it's it's yeah. meant to be played as not some I wouldn't say as go far as say disability, but more as a uh, she has PTSD and she's trying to cope with that. It's n yeah, and I haven't seen what's given her the PTSD originally. Yep. Um, all you, all you need to know is that something happened to Lily from when she was living with Lusamine that caused her not to touch Pokemon anymore. Thinking of that just in that context, just kind of like... When I learned about that, it's like, it terrified me. Yeah, it was surprising. That's the strength of Sun and Moon as a whole. It's surprising just how far they're willing to go with these sorts of concepts because on the surface, Luxamine is a generic villain, but when you read the texts of what Lily and Gladion were saying in Sun and Moon, you're going, holy crap, are they really doing this? Yeah, Luxamine is such a tragic character and they do her character so much better in the anime. Well, of course in the anime because you have more chance to tell a story. And in the game, she is probably one of the most, like, um, what, what's... Fleshed out. Yeah, the one of the most fleshed out characters, next to maybe Archie and Maxi. Yeah, and to go back into what we were saying earlier, while she's, she's better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, in terms of position, like, she's not, she's not suffering from a deadly poison, yeah. for one thing. Yeah. She also doesn't have any... She doesn't get as many opportunities to grow past that that phase. Yeah. Like, she is not put in that position where she realises, oh no, I was wrong, because all she really has at that point is the Necrozma kicked her ass, she gets sent back to, the, back to Alola, where she has the... Lily, run! It's too strong! And that's all she has. Yeah. Yeah, but saying that Sun and Moon, like the original, was like the true story, just giving her character and what happened prior just makes Lucy mean such more of a hu like a human and understandable, relatable character than any of the Pokemon villains. Which actually kind of sucks for her because in Rainbow Rocket, she gets kidnapped. Wait, does she? Yeah. <laughs> Why? She's trying. She's trying to be with her family. She gets kidnapped by Giovanni and Rainbow Rocket, and is in the process of being brainwashed by them until you, as the player, stop them. Brainwashed to do what? Uh. <laughs> well, look over there. Here, have fifty-five big nuggets. I mean. I mean, this is already spoilerific anyway, so... Yeah. Why don't you tell me? What's that? You th What's that? You thought uh, a Mediaholics review on something was not going to be spoiler her focus? <laughs> you have not been here very long. <laughs> I mean, we have to spoil it to really tell what, like, what we like and dislike from it, right? That and because we do things like this a lot later than everyone else, we can just assume that people who are looking into this have probably already gotten it. Yeah, just, so. just, um, you're just gonna add, like, a spoiler there we go. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention the other big thing about this site is that we've got the, the hidden subtitle of Mediaholics! What the hell are rails? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we just have so much fun talking about this. Yeah, and it's why there are lots of gaps in between us talking. I actually leave these as they are. I don't try and cut them down to take out the gaps. I let them be natural because it's just us naturally talking. This isn't scripted at all. Yeah. Behind the scenes here at Mediaholics. We, we just kind of say stuff and wing it. It's also why when you get when we have moments like Tiger Millionaire, which I still find freaking hilarious, that was my genuine reaction to it. I had not heard that before, <laughs> which is why I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I didn't even think you would find it hilarious. You just kind of broke when I said Tiger Millionaire. <laughs> just because I was imagining an incinder an incinder roll with that name, I was like, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. But wait, 
but back on track, why- what are they- why do they- what are they brainwashing her to do? They're brainwashing her to join their team so they can get more access to the Aether Foundation's information on Ultra Wormholes to do something. Don't they already have Faba? Yeah, they do. Then why do they need Lucamine? Because it's Giovanni and Giovanni's an asshole. It's just... No. <laughs> I mean, I understand, like, her joining them here is one thing, but you don't need her to... You already broke into her house! You already broke into, into everything! What else do you yeah. need? It's Giovanni, and Giovanni is deliciously evil. I'm sorry, Gio- Not the most deliciously evil villain I've seen. That still goes- that time goes to Beast Wars. Megatron goes, Yes, we should probably do this. And, yes. Go- go back- Is that sorry, deliciously evil? Giovanni, go home and go be with your son. Remember Silver? Oh, for- for all we know, this Giovanni is from that universe where he just gave control of, t of regular Team Rocket to Silver. For all we know, this could be the Giovanni from the manga universe which managed to control Silver completely. Go back to your son, Giovanni. <laughs> Actually, speaking of things that we would have. Uh, other things related to this going into the other games. Where the hell is Leaf? Again. Where's Chris? I don't even care about Leaf. Where's Chris? Chris, I, I, I would at least rather Leaf because have the three main characters of Kanto. Yeah. Even though Leaf came in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yeah, I understand Leaf, but Leaf is... Leaf has only been in game since Gen 3 because they added um, female later. Why did they... Yeah, but she was un she was only in Fire Red and Leaf Green. Yeah, but why did they feel the need to replace Chris with Lyra? I honestly have no idea. But the ho that bit goes into the extension of the battle tree sort of thing. Where the hell is Leaf, Gold, Silver, Crystal, or Chris, Brendan, May? Dawn, Lucas, Barry, where the hell are these? We could only have one. We all could only afford one silent protagonist for the Gen Oneers. You burn all your budget on getting King Red a change of clothes. <laughs> yeah. We we could only afford we could only afford one. Why the hell is Blue there? Um, he needs an interpreter. Aside from that really kick-ass remix of his thing, which I still really like. He needs an interpreter. To be honest, Red and Blue were only there to appease Gen 1ers. And... Yeah, but it, it's like I said last year, this is the 20th anniversary generation. I would have liked to have seen references to all the generations from an end. What's the biggest reference you can think of than having all of the player characters? Even if they're just battle tree battles, like just having them there. It's like when you fight red on Mount Silver and Gold Silver and Crystal. That's something that hits close to home. Well, considering that Gen 2 was. I mean, they didn't expect to make it third gen. Whoops. No, they didn't. And. Uh, it's just. I still find it such a missed opportunity because. You could have even, you didn't even have to give them remixes, you just have to give them teams based off of, their, of the generations that they're from. Just throw them in, they didn't even need dialogue. Yeah. There's... You give Maxi, you make new models for Maxi and Archie, and you have perfectly serviceable models. You even have perfectly good models of Callum, Serena, Brendan, and May. And yet chose not to do anything with them. We couldn't fit it! You gave Lysander a remix of his theme in this game. A song that is perfectly fine in X and Y. Why? Um, don't get me wrong, I love the remix, but why? What is with this version of resources? You've spent so much time in the picture, I'm surprised you haven't brought up yet. The Alolan Photo Club. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. I love it. Here are all my pictures. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, uh, the, in the center of the screen, by the way, all those images that are, are probably looping across, those are from her because my images are all awful. Wait, you took pictures, right? Honey, hell. Oh, great. Skype. Skype, please. Come back. Skype. Depend. Hi. Depending on how this is going, this is going to have a lot of the intermission theme. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear me screaming Skype? I heard the trail end of it. Yeah. Um. But you were saying about your like your pictures. They're all. Old. I mean, I, I... for re for references, Marissa is actually each train is actually. You're very good at photography. She's been learning how to do that. I'm a photo major. Hello. I'm just an, a yeah. I'm just an AV tech. <laughs> yeah. Um. I mean, I'm so curious how, how you do it. I mean, it's different for everyone how they would uh, take pictures, whether they're skilled or not. I mean, even I'll still throw I'll still throw in what pictures I have from Ultra Sun and most of them coming from Ultra Moon because I did save a lot of them. Yeah. But. A lot of the ones have the cool poses for them. Um, yeah, those are <laughs> most of mine are just step and step. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can like do the poses. And... Well, my my personal favorite one that I made is either the one of the muck or the chandelier. I really like your one for salamence. Oh yeah, I forgot salamence. I was like that. That was the salamence that started it all because I. I mean, I did have Gen 1 and Gen 2, but Gen 3 was the first game I actually tried and beat. And that Salamence has been with me since then. I wish I could say the same thing about my playskin. That playskin did not make up the original save file, and it's the reason why the Groudon Kyogre and Ray Plaza that I do have, those will never leave me. Like, those are the three remaining survivors from that original save file. I am never letting those go. And it is why when Auras came out and they Mega Evolve, the moment I could give them the ways to Mega Evolve, I was so happy. So wait, you have three Pokemon like that and they only have the one? And I could only Mega Evolve into some sort of weird flying croissant! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Meanwhile, my Rayquaza, which was the one I used in my original run of the Hoenn Elite Foreign Champion, that needs its own tier list. Ah, uh, yes. To itself. <laughs> Welcome to AG. It's the only Mega Pokemon that can use a Z move. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Hello, Broken. Z move Dragon Asset, go! Oh god, no! <laughs> well, uh, which Pokemon out of the, the original three do you like the most? Uh, the original three is in... The uh, Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza. Rayquaza. Yeah. Barna. Because that was the one... It Like I said, it was the one that went into the Elite Four and Champion with me the first time through. It's the one I still have horrible, horrible memories of its puzzle to get to. It. Oh yeah, Relicant and where? No, that was for the Regis. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, oh yeah, that was- Meanwhile, Rayquaza had that Mark Bike puzzle. I hated that puzzle, it took me so long to understand that. Then again, I was just a stupid little ten-year-old. Hello? Okay. There we go. Hello. 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 Hello, darkness, my Hello. old friend. I've come to meet with you there again. We go. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hi. I did not get any of that. <laughs> um what were we talking about? Rayquaza? No! All sorts of horrible. 
what just happened? Come back. Hello? Hello? We're back! What just happened? Um, somebody put up the um, intermission theme and nothing happened. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> but... Uh, you were, you were saying? Uh, weren't we talking about Rayquaza? Yeah, Mark Bike Puzzle. Yeah, yeah, t I was just a stupid little ten-year-old, didn't know what I was doing. But I made through that. When I did that, I was on the return bus trip from I want Warrnambool. I'm pretty sure it was Warrnambool. We were on the school. We were there for a primary school camp. I was on the return bus trip there, and I was pretty much spending that entire bus trip going through that marked bike puzzle. When I finally got to the top, I was so happy that I instantly threw the master ball. <laughs> I remember- This was before I noticed that- This is before I knew about roaming legendaries. Oh god. I somehow- I somehow caught- Mistakes were made that day. I- I had such trouble with Latios and Emerald. That I- like I was throwing Ultra Ball at the th Ultra Ball and it kept flying away. So I'm like, screw this. I threw a Premier Ball and it caught it. <laughs> Nice. And a premiere ball is just a fancier looking Pokeball. Nice. I know a friend that caught a Terrakion and a Netball, and I and last week I witnessed another friend of mine catch a Xerneas and a Dive Ball. <laughs> I when in X I was gearing up to fight Mewtwo, who so I was like, okay. I've got a large amount of Ultra Balls, I've got lots of restored power items, I'm ready to take you on. Mewtwo, come at me! I threw a quick ball just to see what happened. I didn't think it would work because this is Mewtwo after all. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Never under- What?! Never underestimate the quick ball. It's like... Mewtwo! I stopped that so much! Just throws all Lots of money was wasted that day. It's like you dumped all your Ultra Balls on the floor. Yeah. Oh, you know what I. I'm actually. Wait, what? I'm actually going to, once I get out of this cutscene, because I've been going through the activity log recently, and some of the results were actually kind of interesting. I'm on the cutscene right before hitting the 8th Foundation for the second time. Those clicks for the record were my. were the hinge of my 3DS opening. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Ow, stop smiling. When we're with Edgy the with we're with Edgy the Edge Lord here. We can't smile. Edgy the Edge Lord. The best part is Summon Moon and he does this in Ultra. When he walks inside the motel room where he's in, he just says, get out. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, god. But At least he's bet he's a better character than Infinite was. I saw Sonic. I saw Sonic Forces, and I understand what how everyone's so divided on it. Why is there a Sonic shirt? <laughs> because because Sonic team are meme lords, and I respect them for that. When a meme goes too far, though. <laughs> a me a meme came too fast. <laughs> yeah. Pokemon Pokemon are hidden meme. Because if you take a picture of a Pelipper in, um, what was it, in Pokefinder, you find a comment, you find a generated comment that says 7.5 out of 10, too much water. Yeah, I heard about that, that was great. I love that. I, those are, yeah, that's, that's the kind of meme integration that I like, along with the, hey, you've collected all of the unlockable costumes, your body is ready. Uh, no, my body is not ready for that. <laughs> So, top five, uh, the top five top or total time played. Take a guess at what they are. Is number one a Pokemon game? Yes, it is. And number three, and number five, and six, and seven, and eight. Well, 
I had six and seven. Let me take a look at my activity log, even though I already know what number one is. Can you take a wild guess at what number one is in my activity log? Monster Hunter? Nope. Oh, I... No, number one most... Is it a Pokemon? I'm sorry, it's number one most time played. Yeah, I, that's what that's what I thought it would be Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter, uh, for Ultimate and then Gen, they're kind of... Monster Hunter Ultimate is like, uh, for Ultimate, sorry, had like 100 hours more than Gen. Monster Hunter 4 is only number fourth on the list. Third is Pokemon Moon. Second is X because I did extensive breeding. And number one, flocking at, flocking in at a depressing 798 hours, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Oh god. <laughs> My total time played is nowhere near that. Clocking in at 177 hours, Pokemon X. That's your... 154 hours being Super Smash Bros. for 3DS. Well, what's your number one? Pokemon X. Oh, okay. Third, surprisingly, is Omega Ruby at 105 hours. Hyrule Warriors Legends at 102 hours, though that one is... That was not entirely accurate because I played that on an, on a another 3DS before I moved to this one. So that total time is actually a lot larger. Right. Number five, this is the most depressing. Pokemon Shuffle. Uh -huh. At 65 hours. Okay. Pokemon Sun at 64 hours. Pokemon Ultra Moon at 49 hours at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of going through it, and Ultra Moon actually got a little ranking to it. It has the most average playtime of what I think that's supposed to be an hour. An, an hour every time. But that's because I was trying to speed through Ultra Moon and going through an island a day. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm actually scrolling down to see what my lowest amount of time in anything is. Um. Tied, tied between, well, four entries tied at 113th place. Nintendo 3DS Sound. Alex Ryder's Stormbreaker, which I'm pretty sure that was actually a hacked, po that was a R4 cartridge. Okay. St well, Steel Diver Sub Wars. I have no idea how that's here. And the Arta Rhythm can call Final Fantasy. Don't think of me any less for this, but I played this before. I played this game before a lot of times on a DS. I was just seeing how we'll, ru we'll run on 3DS. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time. Oh, but Explorers of Darkness is on this one as well, so don't worry about that. Yeah, but that's like the last one. Where's Sky? Because I played Sky extensively. I wish I had a physical copy of Sky. I... Oh, here it is. 11th place. Playtime, 80, 80 hours. My 11th place at 40 hours is Super Mystery Dungeon. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, Super Mystery Dungeon is um, 100 hours for me. You put in more time than I have. Yeah, and uh, above that, stories, because I just spent the majority of the game trying to hunt eggs. My number one number of times played, at 406 times played, with an average playtime of six minutes, straight pass. <laughs> I, I, I miss when people got a best miss from straight pass. I think I have more puzzle pieces than any, anyone else does. My number one for oh. my number one for uh, frequency is Pokemon X. Uh, oh yeah. The total, the other ones for total times played. Number two is Pokemon X at 290. Friend list at 250. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> Pokemon Shuffle at 219. Why is Pokemon Shuffle up so high? Uh, I guess you liked it. System settings at 163. Oh man, my favorite game. <laughs> then Super Smash Bros. for 3DS at 151. You know, you know what the best game 
for them. I've opened up the notifications 148 times. <laughs> Wait, which game? Notifications. <laughs> I think the best game in this whole list of 3DS games is health and safety notifications. I mean, health and safety information. Uh, nice. Uh, here's something slightly depressing. Tied for 13th. Oh no. Internet browser and Sonic Generations. Is internet browser on here? Nintendo Zone Viewer is on here. I'm just kind of going through the book now. Okay, there was Monster Hunter Generations demo and then Monster Hunter Generations. Got robots here, of course. We got Mini Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge. Uh, Nintendo Badge Arcade. All these fun things. Oh, here's something interesting. You know how Pokemon X was number two on the number times played? Yeah. Pokemon Y is number 51st. I mean... I mean, I guess we played X. You're guessing which one I played first! Hmm. Was it X? No, it was actually Y. Really? Joking. No, it wasn't. Oh, I remember Dream. I forgot. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity I've played eight times. Sometimes I... I've turned it on eight times. Sometimes I keep forgetting how old the 3DS is now. Yeah. I mean, what was like the first game I got for this? Uh... Okay. Well, you can find out. Date first played. No, sorry. Date last played. Right, no, no, that's no, it's moment. date first played. Well, actually, back to the library, it will bring up the stuff. So on the first page of the software library, to things I played in order. Notifications, AR games, Me Maker, System Settings, Nintendo 3DS Camera, Spider-Man Edge of Time, the only 3DS game I've lost because it actually, it accidentally thundered a bit. Base Raiders, Friend list, Me Plaza, then Pokemon White 2. I just want to point out that when you go by date last played or first played, you scroll all the way down. It's like when you go to first played, for instance, it says, um, early last played. It says, oh, you played this yesterday. You played internet browser because that's to upload pictures. You played this yesterday. Ultra Moon, because I guess it's just roll over 12 on my screen. Early, played three days ago, X, the moon stuff. And then you scroll all the way down. Played 2,172 days ago, Face Raiders, please come back. <laughs> oh no, I can top that. Luigi's Mansion 2. I was borrowing CJ's copy, I think. Yeah. I only played it one time, and we were doing download play for it. First time I played it? The 9th of July, 2001. <laughs> 5,992 days What ago. happened to your calendar? I don't know. <laughs> that was even before the 3DS was born. That was before the DS was born. This was Game Boy. <laughs> this was two years before Ruby. This was the year Crystal came out. <laughs> you are from the future. This is the year I was in prep! Actually, going back... And this was my first year of primary school! Actually, here's a good question. Not even just for Pokemon, because what, what is Pokemon anymore? What, what was this anyway? What were we talking about? I forgot. <laughs> what are rails? Again, Meteorholics, what the hell are rails? Yeah, but my question is, if you were to bring back any game from the past, like if you were to bring back a game from the Game Boy era, what would you bring back? And what would you show someone? Um... I know this is gonna sound weird, but this is actually one of the Game Boy games that I kept from my childhood. My Game Boy Advance. Robot Wars Advanced Destruction. And that's what you would bring to someone to show how games age in the future? Yeah. Huh? 
something I was thinking about now, and I'm like, what if you brought back Odyssey? Oh, if you brought Super, if you brought Super Mario Odyssey back to the past to show what it was like before Super Mario, or when Super Mario World was around, everyone would probably lose their goddamn minds. Oh, true. I was watching a stream with somebody playing Cuphead, and they said kind of a similar thing. It's like, what if you brought Cuphead back in the 1930s and showed some of this? <laughs> Mind blown more than uh, Blastephalon. Yeah. Well, the game I'd bring back just to show just how bad the industry is nowadays. Oh no. I would go back to the early 2000s and show the people of the past what EA did to Star Wars Battlefront 2. But you too. can't show what EA does to Battlefront 2 because you have to be connected online. Oh god damn it. <laughs> the servers didn't exist. <laughs> well, I would still bring it back to the past and say, people. I'm sh I'm showing this to you now as a warning. Do not let this happen in the future. Save the future! Save the future and everything's still safe. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> you did less than me! Oh no. Here's here's another thing that would be worse. You go back to the future, and it's even worse now because they looked in and went, ooh, microtransactions, huh? <laughs> Ching. Oh no! No! That's the biggest microtransaction. Why do I need to pay five hundred dollars for a quick ball? <laughs> five hundred real dollars. The only good thing to come out of it is like the jokes, because I saw one one uh, post that said, "Hey, look, EA opened up a brand new arcade right outside my bank, and it's just a it's just a couple of ATMs." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no! It, the fact that a true sign that the game industry is stuffed at the moment? When the Sonic the Hedgehog Twitter page can take stabs at it. Sonic Horses, look at that up. Oh my god. You gotta send that to me, I gotta see that. I'll buy it now. Yeah. Like, yeah, when the Sonic page is making that deep of the stab into what you're doing, you fucked up. When Sonic Team is laughing at you, you, you something, something went horribly, horribly wrong. Yeah, seeing as the last time they did that was the was what Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. They had a random question. What is what oh. is Rareware doing? Uh, see of Thieves. Oh, true. You know, yes, I was. Also, take a look. Okay. I was just watching the stream um, of a rare oh, game. Intense. There we go. Uh, what's the Sonic? Sonic the Sonic Horses. What? Please note, Sonic Horses is actually just a series of RNG lock boxes. Every each lock box has one out of two hundred possible tiny horses inside. You can customize your tiny horses with additional tiny accessory RNG lock boxes. Lock bosses are a report award after 200 hours of gameplay for $50 and Sonic Bucks TM. <laughs> that, that is great. And then they have a cover for it at the top. Sonic Horses, 10 out of 10. Best game. Yeah. That is a serious book. You know what? I don't understand when people talk about loot boxes. They always, when you say loot box, the image of the image of um, Blizzard Overwatch loot box like comes to mind. But I would have never thought Blizzard Overwatch was this bad because because it, unlike EA, all it was is just um, custom customization. That was it. The reason why people are, blame, are putting the blame onto Activision Blizzard is because Activision's gotten a lot worse with it in terms of like Call of Duty and that. While Blizzard is still pretty good about it, the thing is that they did it first. So when you think of loot boxes, you think of the ones that did it first and that was Blizzard. So while they're still the best at it, it's not complete. It's not completely money grabbing. It's still the one that made Ubisoft EA main Activision, etc. have dollar bills for eyes at that one point and go, we can make so much money off of this. 
cha ching that's such a shame because blizzard had the best loot boxes and blizzard didn't even have the first loot box i mean t I, if i remember correctly tf2 had loot boxes still has them yeah, yeah. TF2 had loot boxes with. But the reason why people give Team Fortress 2 a slide is because the loot boxes were brought in. <coughs> Sorry. The loot boxes were brought in, I think, after Team Fortress 2 went free to play. Oh. Whereas Overwatch is still paying a startup fee. Oh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I could see that. And that's basically my stance on the matter. If it's a game I'm getting free, I can live with loot boxes. I'd rather they not be there, but I can live with them if the game is free to start. It's the reason why I've got no issue with it for something like Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. But when you bring microtransactions into games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, which requires well, not even requires, they would love for you to pay 120 bucks to get the game at at launch. If they're still making you pay that much money? Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, I was, a, I was never a huge Star Wars fan because, like, I got... Like, when people say spoilers, like, that that word is, like, um, done to death. You don't even know what, what it means anymore. But when I think spoilers, I am very spoiled when it comes to uh, Star Wars. So if it sounds like I hate Star Wars or don't know of it because I didn't watch it, it's not that I hate it, it's because I just hate how spoiled I am with it. But I must admit... Yeah, and the only way you can really avoid that is if you go to watch the movies before you go to see all the spoilers, well, before you see all the spoilers, or just shut off the internet until you see the movies. Which, for movies that came out in the 80s, that's a little hard to do. Yeah, I know. And and when I was when I was just a little just a little young person, I always like I already know like Star Wars and what happens and I don't need to watch the movie. But Star Wars like Battlefront as a game has good potential. Uh, it, it, it looks pretty cool because I had a lot of I had Star Wars games growing up. Like I had Rogue Squadron and I had that one racing game. I think it was like Pod Racing. Thing. Not to mention the original Star Wars Battlefront 2. No, that's a good game. I've got that on PC. That is a fun as hell game. Yeah, that looks like a good game with good potential, but got ruined by the company. And what's worse is that that Battlefront 2 isn't even the only offender of what EA did to their games this year. They did the same. They did the same thing for Need for Speed Payback. They're doing it again for the newest Ultimate Fighting Club game, I think that's UFC. Whatever it's yeah. called. And apparently it's even worse in UFC in the coming next year. It's even worse. Can we just, like, rewind back to E3 of this year, I think. Was it this year? Yeah, it was. When EA is like, here's Star Wars Battlefront. We promise not to, like, add, like you know, pay to win stuff or anything like that. No, they didn't say pay to win stuff. They said we will not add in paid for DLC. Oh. There wouldn't be no season pass, no DLC, either you have to pay for things like that. And when I saw that, I was like, great, this is going to be great. But in the back of my head, I was like, wait, something's not right here. EA wouldn't do something like that unless they were doing something else. And unfortunately, I was right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was actually watching a video of someone covering EA. It's, it's like back in E3, they were like, this is EA. They'll find some, some way to screw it up. And then later, they're just like, yeah. they screwed it up. <laughs> they screwed up so bad that the US, the UK, Hawaii, Belgium, Australia, and a few other countries, I think, are lo looking into if loot boxes are considered gambling. Yeah. They fucked it up hard. Thanks, EA. The fact that Disney had to go, step in and go cut this shit out is saying a hell of a lot. It's so bad that people think that Disney might have enough of a justification to revoke the Star Wars license from EA. Oh my god. I mean, they should. <laughs> they really, really should. Yeah. Can we just say... Because the 
the only good Star Wars game that EA has made recently was Bioware's The Old Republic MMO. And that was six years ago. It's an MMO, are they even still alive? Yeah. Yeah, and I've heard it's a really good an MMO as well. It's a really good game. Yeah, I, I never I never could really get into MMOs just because of how grind heavy they are. That and at least for here, Australian internet is awful. True. So Yeah, I'll pass on the MMO. Yeah. But like I just wanted I would have loved it if this game was everything everyone wanted it to be. I then like we said at E3 I was really looking forward to Battlefront 2. I was looking at the gameplay of it and thinking, this is going to be fun. This is going to be great. And if it was everything people wanted it to be, I would have bought it. But as soon as I heard about the microtransactions, I was like, no, this is not right. Yeah, it's kind of messed up that they lock, like, heroes behind, like, an $80 paywall. They have, they have to, well, how much are the heroes? I don't know the exact numbers. I think they're numbers. like 40. And the thing about the exact numbers is that the loot boxes are completely RNG. So you can't even give a good estimation because the odds may not be in your favor. Uh, and that's where the gambling comes from. Yeah. So, if Battlefront was adopted by any other company and could be, which company would you give it to? I don't know, honestly, because the only other company that is known for its shooters is Activision. Uh, well, we'll have to see. Maybe some new company. And... Company. Yeah, like, the thing about it as well is, like, Activision is almost just as bad because, yeah, you've got Overwatch, but also Call of Duty has gone really bad with the loot boxes. Is Destiny 2 was really bad with the loot boxes, and Activision actually patented a way of getting people to buy more loot boxes. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I was talking about loot boxes again, me sleepy. <laughs> yeah. We should probably wrap it up here though, because I've uh, lost sight of those rails. Yeah, I know. Because we're pretty much done with talking about Pokemon Ultra Moon, and just wanted to yeah. cover about loot boxes. The closing thing though for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Do you think Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon required a br in brand new games? Um, I understand about the challenge and the gameplay, but the changes to the story I don't think were needed. I mean, it kind of loose ends with like how some Pokemon work, like Necrozma. Um, I'm surprised that they didn't add any new, um, Alolan forms, which I was kind of sad by. Same here, honestly. Yeah, where's my Alolan Weezing? Where's my Alolan Blossom? I know. Is Blossom eating? That thing is screaming in Alolan form. Bla is Bla Blossom's not even in the decks. No, it's not. But, but that's the odd thing about it. Oh yeah, where is the National Dex? Again! Mm, sorry. Yeah, all good, we're wrapping up. Not oh, pretty soon, anyway. Like, the way I can look at I've been looking at it, I love the new challenge, but that could have just been a hard mode for some of them. Yeah. The story content, nothing of it is so consequential enough they need its own separate game. I mean... To me, nothing about this needed a separate game, especially in the era of DLC. Yeah, I mean, Rainbow Rocket was fun, but I think Come Ultra on! is there to make up for the fact, the feeling that if anyone was feeling that Sun and Moon were fresh and felt as empty as X and Y and Oros towards the end. Uh, what was that? I didn't get any of that. Okay. Um, say it again. Um, I think Ultra is really there because we had a problem with Sun and from X and Y to Oros to Sun and Moon is that towards the ending of each game there wasn't really much for post-game. Ultra can No. No? Well, no, as I'm agreeing. Oh, okay. Ultra Ultra came in to make up for the fact that Ultra has a better post-game than any of those games. 
just to say that we that that they are trying to fix that. But it but it kind of ruined the story from the original movie just to do that. Yeah. The good thing about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon is that it shows that they're taking a step in the right direction for what they're going to be doing for Generation 8. And after a article, I'm not sure where it was, but there was an article saying that the that the Pokemon team is looking at games like Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey and looking at them and going, we need to do this for Pokemon. An open there, There's already an open world Pokemon, and that's called Pokemon Go. Yeah, and just imagine what the Switch could do for Pokemon. Are you are you really saying they're gonna make an open world Pokemon game? I don't think so, but I think I think Generation Eight is going to be that massive shake up of Pokemon yeah. and throw out everything you thought you knew, sort of thing. Judging by how they're saying of that, I think they're gonna remove roots and just kind of have Pokemon certain grass patches, kind of like how in how in Alola where you have Route 1, but you won't find Grubbin in one gra grass patch, but you find Grubbin in another. Uh, you know, something like that. Yeah, I can see that. I'd, I still would wrap the routes because I don't want them to throw away the story if they go open world, and the reason why I say it is because name one open world RPG where the story is still the focus. Name one. I mean... Technically, there was Skyrim if you really wanted to follow the story. And even then, it was like, look, here's that main story thing you can care about, but ooh, look over here. Ooh, look over there. I look mean, over here. Look over there. Look over here. Look over there. It's like, I mean, to be fair, the story doesn't matter. To be fair, Sun and Moon and, and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon kind of added more. They added a little side quests that you can do. They don't take us. They don't take as long, depending on the side quest. They don't take very long to do, and they're just kind of. Fun, fun to do, and you could easily ignore them. Yeah, and I'm fine with the side quests like that because there's still a focus on the story. Hey, your goal is to still go from here, from A to B to C. But the thing with like Skyrim and Fallout is like, look, here's an overarching story where your son was kidnapped from by the such and such. Okay, how do I get there? You have to do. 20 side quests first, and those side quests could lead on to other side quests, and it just goes on from yeah. there. It doesn't feel important. Even if it's something like, your child's been kidnapped. Your child's been kidnapped, but can you please make our family a sandwich? <laughs> exactly. Hey. Yeah, but we... I just want... I want them to keep a good focus on the story, because... Generation 5 onwards, the stories have been getting so much better. Yeah. I don't want them to throw that away. Sun and Moon, at least for the original, I think has the, the best story of any of the Pokemon games I've played so far. Just be, just because Lucimi and her family were such good characters. Agreed. And with, the, with this whole, like, focus since um, when did they start focusing on the multiverse theory? Uh, they focused on it in... They brought attention to it in Aurora's, yeah. basically. I mean, it was kind of in Gen 5, but in Gen 5 they said, like, truth and the ideals are kind of the same, there's not much different to them, but in Auras, they're kind of like, oh, there's, there's, um, there exists multiple, multiple universes out there. With the multiverse yeah. theory, it's so perfect for Pokemon to do. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, that, and that's a great idea that, to do it too, especially with the, you know, version, version differences and all that. Yeah. Though I, one thing I will say about Generation 8, and it was a big problem in Sun and Moon, it's a little bit better in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but still pretty blatant. Game Freak. I know you design your Pokemon games to be for kids. I'm perfectly fine with that, completely understandable. Could you please, though? I am begging you. I am on my knees begging you. Let us skip the How to Capture a Pokemon tutorial. 
happened? Please. I beg you. Dave. The fact that I could probably recite your code to you <laughs> off my heart. Now. <laughs> hey, everyone. You want to learn about capture rates? <laughs> it's just... I don't need these tutorials. I know what I'm doing for them. Let me skip them. Po Pokemon... Uh, what is it? Po I can't think. Pokemon Open World, except the entire world is just inside of the school. Damn it! <laughs> hey, do you know how to play? If so, then if yes. not, then let me help you. I do know how to this play. This is how you walk. <laughs> Press the up button to walk. Press the A button to jump. <laughs> Press the A button again while in the air to do a homie attack. Did you know you could do a homie attack? Yes! Oh, Motel, what are you doing here? Wrong game! Shut. Shut the oh. No, omachao has been here ever since because that's technically how the tutorial's like. Omachao just changes forms between two Pokemon generations. In Generation 6, he was Calipas Arena. In Generation 7, he's Professor Kakui. In... No, no. In Gen 7, he's Rotom. <laughs> oh, it makes no. more sense. Rot Rotom yeah. speaks, but with Omachao's voice. Oh god. <laughs> Someone turn more really off. Oh god. I think that's... A yeah, I think that's a little well, The only other thing I want to say is that we've got. Hopefully, we've got one more video planned. That's the year summary. I'm assuming you want to do that again this year. Uh, <laughs> the summary of the year that was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we could do that. If, if for whatever reason I'm not. Hopefully yeah. not. When that happens, we're not sure because we like, as you can probably tell from our release schedule, we like taking large breaks between videos. Yeah. yeah we get, well, especially I get that Well, that and I need to destroy it. Oh, that too, yeah. It, it takes 24 hours to upload one of these videos. Remember that one time where you say you got you got to move these videos from one one YouTube to another, and I did in like five minutes, and you got scared. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I knew you were sitting. It was good. I didn't think it was that good. Because <laughs> what took you what took you five minutes took me days. <laughs> you got like, in five minutes. You got like five, like five emails that your video got uploaded. You're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what's wrong? What happened? I, I still remember the uh, the I forget what we called it, what I called it, but the video that just showed all the stuff that had been released on the site up until then. That took me several days to do because I had to keep taking it down because of copyright claims, having to travel to my university to upload it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. And the fact that you did that so quickly, it's like... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, guess it, I guess it's just uh, like where I live. It's like... Uh, my brother is like... Such like so and like tech like he's technically skilled and he he was he went to like computer to study computer hardware and software and all that he knows computer science and he's like okay we have to get like when we are looking for a new house it's like okay we have to get a with a home but with fiber output and that's what we got and he like hooked up all the hooked up all the stuff so we have like the best internet ever. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah. I've come to chat with you again. And this is what happens when you live in America in a very densely populated area as well. Meanwhile, here, the, our, our politicians are still squabbling over how to handle the NBN. I mean, over here we have one. New Zealand has better internet connection than we do. Uh. 
I mean, you know what? I heard that, like, because during Thanksgiving we, we were talking about uh, net neutrality and all that. And the only reason that net neutrality, not just net neutrality, but, like, internet is, like, a thing, is because in Japan they said it would be just so much easier if you ran the internet wire through telephone lines, or, like, telephone lines. But for whatever reason, just because it looks semi-ugly, they don't want to do it despite having better internet connection. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of times they want to do it just because it, I guess it just took time and it's ugly. But it, took, it takes even more time to run it through the ground through fiber optics, which I don't understand. Just just, just because it looks nice. Meanwhile, he... Meanwhile here, the NBN went from a national wireless network across the whole country to fiber optic to all the houses, to fiber optic to nodes and then copper to the houses, and then it's currently in the uh, phase of what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> Basically. Uh, I'm sorry for you. And... Well, I'm probably I'm probably gonna get screwed over in this whole net neutrality thing. Which, is kind of thing Which at the rate it's going, from what I've heard, it probably is just because because the FCC's basically gone rogue. <laughs> I mean, kinda. I mean, if they if they still if they do say yes, they still have to go through hoops to even get it through. Like that's just the way that like, that's just the way the Senate usually works. Is like if you say yes to something, you just have to get everyone's approval like three times before it before it actually goes into effect. Hopefully that works, but at the same time, remember when and Soper and Pippa were going through, and you, there were people on your side going. I don't know how this new fang dangle technology stuff works, but I'm going to say that we need Sopa and Pippa. Oh yeah, but that never, no, what? that never became a thing. Thankfully. Yeah, it, we we get this stuff every year. It's, it's like, it's like, everyone's everyone's like saying, uh, oh, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. In the end, it just never happens, and it just gets recycled for the next year. It's like. Happy December. This this is Happy Net Neutrality Month. Net Neutrality Awareness Month. Meanwhile, over here we are currently going through yet another political debate as to who the hell the prime minister is going to be. I mean, is it? Did I ever tell you that the? I don't know what we're up to now at this point, but did I tell you that it's gone so bad that paramedics have actually stopped asking people who have had injuries who's the current prime minister because it keeps changing. <laughs> What is going on? Up until I was in like, grade five, we had one prime minister. Okay. For the time, he had a very long session. And then from the prime minister that beat him onwards, it has gone back and forth all the damn time. I am changing from one political leader of the party to another political of the party to changing parties to another uh, leader and then that leader gets overthrown for someone Over else and overthrown ugh. what is this like really weird monarchy system oh no how the the how it happened was for the first one the last time labor was in charge the prime minister got over well prime minister kevin rudd got overthrown by julia gillard who then got overthrown by Kevin Rudd, who then lost to Tony Abbott, who got overthrown by the current Malcolm Turnbull. And I think currently someone's looking to overthrow Malcolm Turnbull. Regicide. Ah. I believe that's called regicide. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Who's even running this country? Emus. The emos have won. I think I've probably do a better job than some of the political leaders we have at the yeah. moment. It, it's the better. Looking at you, Pauline Hansen. You, you like you. Um, the doors to to the political office of Australia open. In comes an emu in a wheelchair, claiming that he was a survivor from the Great Emu War, and claims that he should be the new leader of Australia. 
the emu will rise again. I, He's an emu sympathizer. I should, probably, I, should, I should probably tell you it's pronounced emu. emu? Oh. Yes. I will. Not emu. I think it's cool. I e mu. That is how we it. I mean, it's just e and mu. But okay. Granted, it's not quite as bad as Melbourne. Yeah. That one I still find really annoying. <laughs> the record. It's, yeah, I know it's Melbourne, but it's Melbourne. <laughs> I I know our pronunciations are weird in compared to its spelling. I get that. Totally get yeah. that. I mean, do you understand where I get emu from? Yeah. yeah. I do. But, yeah. The gr <laughs> emu... Emu sym sympathizer. <laughs> uh, I think it's about time we wrap up. <laughs> Don't you love my <laughs> tiny knowledge of Australia? Yeah, at least it's bad. At least you're better than some people from the U.S., which, from what I've heard, still think that it, the U.S. is the only country living off of a sea of Mexican immigrants. Wait, you get them too? That's from what I've heard. <laughs> I mean, nah, that can't make sense. I mean, what? I mean, wh it's the U.S. I'm not surprised. People still believe the world is flat. Are you honestly surprised? No. <laughs> honestly, I find flat earthers so funny. I do too. There's one pose that, like, someone asks, um, hello, flat earthers. Why is the Earth considered flat but Mars isn't? And then the Flat Earth Society just goes, Great question. We observed that the that Mars is round. So why can't the Earth be round? The funniest thing I've ever seen from a joke about the Flat Earth Society. So you have the Flat Earth, and then like well, with all the dinosaur, dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, like, a meteor comes in and like hits half of the Flat Earth, so the Flat Earth just kind of like tips over and just launches the dinosaurs into space. <laughs> 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 and that's how the dinosaurs went extinct! <laughs> oh no! The dinosaurs are being sent into space! Quick! Call Colrus Man! <laughs> what is he gonna do? <laughs> he somehow manages to teleport everyone back to their own universes. So, quick! Colrus Man! Help those dinosaurs! This is just insane, I need a sleep. <laughs> We need someone to just grab the artwork of Chorus and just stick a cape on the back of it. A blue cape. Chorus man. The best superhero. Of course. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. Yeah. Let's go yeah. here. Uh. See us everyone. Goodbye. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, Goodbye.